Well, welcome to the Gateway RV Transport podcast. We uh, have had the great opportunity of meeting with a few of our drivers to be able to just explore a little bit of their experience, their time on the road, and a little bit about them. And today we are fortunate and blessed to have with us Ty, Ty Schuler. So welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're glad that you could that you could come in and uh, yeah, just spend a few minutes out sure. of the heat and chaos that's out there and. We can be back here pretending like we're working, okay? You know, and still be on the clock. Perfect, so perfect. That's why. That's really why we started the podcast was so that we could have every once in a while an hour or or so to Good not work. always <laughs> just nose to the so grindstone nice. all yeah. the time. Well, you guys are hard at work when I stop. I know that. <laughs> so you know, so you're putting on a good show up front there. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's uh, yeah, good actors. Uh, anyway, well, to, I guess to get started, um, Ty, why don't you just tell us a little bit about you? Where are you, where are you from? I mean, I, I, th- I mean, I, I think I know, but a little sure. bit where you're from, how you grew up. I should let you guess then. See if you're, see if you're right. No, uh, originally I'm, I'm from Northern Indiana, uh, lived in Northern Indiana pretty much, uh, my entire life, uh, graduated from Northwood high school over in Napanee, uh, and then went to Purdue university. Uh, I have a math degree. Uh, so, um, what I, is the, what's the name of the degree? It's uh, it's actually a bachelor's of science. Uh-huh. Uh, what they give us it's out of school of science down here, but um, but it's a uh, it's a math degree. So I'm I'm kind of the weird guy, I guess, that takes all those math courses that nobody likes. So I take <laughs> them and uh, I put a good smiling face on and act like I'm enjoying them. <laughs> but, uh, but actually, I do. actually I do uh, and that. But uh, uh, currently living at live in Albion, living in Albion, Indiana. Uh, I wear many hats during the course of the year, uh, from teacher, coach, to goat farmer, to transport driver. Uh, I just kind of switch the hats around on a daily basis. So, so the other day, I think I got a glimpse out of the corner of my eye, a goat sitting on somebody's lap, and I wasn't sure if that was real Stacey or not. Stacy had been getting on Ty's case about bringing a goat by, and then yeah. when he finally did, she was didn't seem that as interested as really? I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she thought it was going to be smaller. Uh, well, yeah. yeah. Well, well, you were asking for a goat. Yeah. <laughs> but funny thing is, that wouldn't be the weirdest animal we've had uh, in no. here. Oh, really? Nice. The, I talk about this day all the time. The day the monkeys came oh. was awesome. We had a couple. We had a driver who ran an exotic petting zoo in Indianapolis, Ooh. and she brought in these little lemurs. Okay, and that was awesome. That was there pretty cool. Go. But the next best animal has been goats. Has been goats, perfect. followed by dogs. Perfect. Followed by dogs. Okay. Now, so you you breed the goats? Yeah, uh, we, we use them for four uh, H. This is my son's last year's tenth year at four H, and and uh, we've been. We've been raising goats, breeding goats for probably the last, I think this is year number seven or eight for us. I've kind of lost count. Um, but, uh, yeah, we started off, funny story, we, we went to get the first goat. My son was so excited. Uh, we went over there and picked up our first goat. And then on the way home, my wife told me that they're companion animals. So, therefore, I thought I was only buying one goat. Nope. I bought two goats, and now we have 50 goats. <laughs> so this has been, uh, yeah, needless to say, I think the project has turned into more of a lifestyle. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I think after this year at the fair, I think we're going to start winding down the herd a little bit. But um, we not only go to the county fair, uh, we do a lot of open shows with goats. Um, my wife raised goats when she was younger, so that's kind of how we got into it. And uh, she was the big 4-H livestock person around our house. But uh but no, so we're gonna we go to the fair here in a couple of weeks. Uh, we go to Cassiasco County Fair, and we're gonna take our goats over there. And my son's been begging for the last ten years that he's been at 4-H to show hogs. So we also have two hogs that we're gonna take over there as well. So he's gonna be quite the busy guy at the fair. So okay. yeah. how do you move fifty goats around? Uh, very carefully. <laughs> uh, no, we have we have some fenced in in the back, so most of them are out to pasture, so they kind of okay. take care of themselves. Um, on a daily basis, they're really kind of low maintenance. Uh, but uh, every morning, you know, you get up, you got we got a few of them that we got to milk um, and uh, and feed them, and then throw them out to pasture for the day and repeat at night when we bring them in. So, but uh, yeah, we take them off pasture at night. We just got way too many coyotes and wolves out that way, and so so we just kind of we protect them as best we can. Cool. Yeah. So uh, when you're thinning down the herd, does that mean you're giving your friends mysterious jerky packages or how does it, what do you do with goats uh we actually did uh we first year we we did butcher one uh we we had one in there uh we butcher them uh they're they're weathers so it's just like making a bull steer it's the same type of deal there and uh 
but no, we did that. And for my son's 4-H grilling project, we made goat burgers. And so he actually won with his goat burgers the first year. So we were, we were pretty excited about that. But uh, I think the goat was about 120 pounds and we got about 33 pounds of ground goat. <laughs> so <Okay. laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, huh. uh, people like it. Uh, it's, it's, I guess, the leanest meat that you can buy is goat meat hmm. as far as there's zero fat in the meat. Yeah, it's uh, so it, it doesn't stick well together if you're making burgers or stuff like that. You know, you got to kind of put a, a binder in there to put it together. But other than that, uh, it's good. If You know, it's got a little gamey, gamey smell little gamey flavor to it but uh if you like venison or deer uh goats right down right down that same line so hmm. but uh no we'll sell we'll sell a lot of ours uh here in august um we'll go to either rochester or shipshawana sale barn and when people are looking to buy buy bucks and and things like that for their breeding stock of their own herd and that's normally where we get rid of them at yeah hmm. i've been too nervous to have a tried goat milk but what uh is it like normal milk or? if you can get over the smell I, I have a bad problem with it because we milk all the time and, and it just smells like a greasy goat, you know, so if you can get past the smell, then it does taste uh, a lot like regular cow's milk. It is a little fattier content than cow's milk, so it's a little richer, but um, other than that, we use it to cook with. That's, yeah, we use it to cook with. You, you cook and put it in stuff, you can't tell the difference. Mm. Yeah, you can't tell the difference, so, but uh, as far as drinking it straight, though, I can't get over that. <laughs> yeah. my, my wife can, but I... The smell gets me. <laughs> uh, huh. Well, a lot of parts of the world, goat is a staple meat. It's like the, mm-hmm. the one of the main deals. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. In fact, when we were um, we were in Morocco, basically everything that we ate, vegetables, fruit, whatever, tasted like goat's smell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whether it was goat or not, I'm sure we had goat too. But it just uh, yeah, it's a interesting. It's a big staple. A lot of some of the holidays. Um, uh, I, I know. Uh, Right around Easter time, uh, I think next year we're going to take some for the Easter sale up at Shipshawana. Um, and a, a lot of the, the Hispanic culture there, they they buy a lot of that for for their Easter meals and things like that. So, but yeah, there's a lot of different cultures around that. That's about all they eat is is goat, and they love it. And they probably live a lot longer than we do because we don't eat enough yeah. goat, maybe. So. It's probably true. Yeah. I mean, if it's got no fat in it, basically, yeah. then it's a lot better than It was probably eat. something to say for their lifestyle also, you know, yeah. Yep. Yeah. being out yeah. and working. And yeah. uh, So I'm curious, what why, what were you hoping to do with a math degree when you got a math degree? Um, uh, obviously, teaching uh, was, was the big thing there. Um, you know, I, there's a lot of different fields. My mom was a teacher uh, growing up, so I kind of had a lot of the insides and outs of, of education, and, and it was something I enjoyed. I really think what really got me was the summers off. <laughs> so, yeah. But, um, uh, and being a math teacher, you know, there there's not a lot of demand out there for math teachers, so if you can get a math degree out there, you're pretty much almost guaranteed to get a job. Um, you know, nothing against nothing against the people that, that teach PE or those other, you know, uh, subjects like yeah, but some of those sometimes they're just a dime a dozen. Everybody goes in and gets a PE degree, and there's a, there's a lot of I guess competition for positions. But for math, there's not a lot, uh, and and they normally if you get into a good school corporation there, they'll they'll keep you a lot of time. Like hey, you know we we need math teachers. We don't want to go out and find another one. And and so obviously you got to be a good teacher too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but no, I've, I've I've been been real fortunate in the places that I've taught at. Uh, just have been fantastic places uh, to teach and, and coach along with that and things. But um, what, no, do you, what do you coach? Uh, basketball. Yeah, I coach uh, JB basketball, and then and then I'm also assistant athletic director. I forgot that hat as well. I guess I got too many hats that I wear. So, <laughs> but uh, but for yeah, Central Noble for West Noble. West Noble. So, yeah, yeah. So we're uh, over at West Noble, and and they they've been absolutely great over there and stuff. And uh, our basketball program has been up and coming. We had a really good season last year. So it's been it's been really enjoyable. Did you play basketball in school? I managed basketball in okay. high school. Yeah, I was a football player, uh, managed basketball, and then uh, in the spring I did I did multiple things. Uh, I ran track a couple of years, played golf one year. That was a disaster. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, but no, yeah, I was a basketball manager uh, all all four years in high school. So that was pretty good. So you you always had the goal of being a teacher. Uh, now I, I guess I can't say that I've always had the goal of being a teacher. Uh, I, I really wanted to be an astronaut. That was my big thing when I was younger. Um, I know it's kind of on everybody's wish list when they're third and fourth grade, but, mm-hmm. um, 
but no, I, I actually uh, put in, um, uh, went down to their uh, week long week long camp over spring break. Uh, went down to Kennedy Space Center for a week. I, I did that a couple years in a row. Um, actually, was uh, I was looking to attend the Air Force Academy. I wanted to fly fighter jets, and that um, had everything lined up to go to the Air Force Academy. Uh, but my eyesight was too bad. Uh, if I don't wear my contacts, they tell me I'm legally blind. So <laughs> I try to keep make sure I keep those in during the day. But uh, uh, and unfortunately, at that time, been fly fighter jets. They did not take the LASIK surgery. Uh, and that was this was in the late '90s, and uh, they weren't doing that yet. It wasn't uh, the surgery wasn't proven enough that they could come back with different pressures and things. So um, they said, "Yeah, you can come." But it's going to probably be a desk job. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't want a desk job, so I switched, went to Purdue, and got my math degree and stuff, and um, and did kind of my second choice, I guess, second option of of teaching and coaching. So, wow, good, yeah, because yeah, everybody <laughs> wants to be an astronaut at one point, but you yeah. actually did yeah. something. Uh, yeah, you I think uh, I think it, astronaut yeah. firefighters probably the big the top That's two, the you know, ones, yeah, yeah. <laughs> some of the big ones there about third and fourth grade. But uh, no, I lo- I I loved it every chance. Um, my grandparents lived in Florida for the longest time and we'd go down there and we were always hoping that something would launch, shuttle would launch or something. We'd always drive over to Kennedy Space Center and watch the launch or things like that. So it was, it was always fun. No, I really, I really enjoy that part of it. And the math kind of ties in with that. You gotta be pretty good at math if you want to be an astronaut. So, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so have you spent most of your teaching career teaching math or have you done other yeah, subjects as yeah. well? Yeah. Um, uh, I've taught math every, uh, at every level from uh, seventh grade math to uh, upper level calculus college. Of course, I've always, I also taught a semester at Purdue. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so I've kind of done kind of the full gamut of what, what I can teach. They kind of ask me, what do you want to teach next year? Whatever. It doesn't matter. At this stage, year 21, I guess, it's, uh, yeah, just give me something. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, awesome. So. Yeah, and math is uh... – yeah, subject that most people kind of are terrified of. Don't want to. Yeah. Don't want to touch that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Most I did of the kids. Most of the kids are terrified of it as well. Yeah. You know, so we try to make it fun. Um, you know, form break it down as easy as we can. Uh, you know, and things and 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 stuff, and they work out pretty well. Uh, it works out pretty well for the kids. Most of the kids, kind of, when they get in there, it's kind of like, ooh, this is this is kind of scary. You know, there's a lot of different things here. And then by the time that they leave, they're more like, oh, that really wasn't as awful as I thought it was going to be and stuff. So, but, uh, but yeah, oh, I enjoy it. Because math is compounding. If you have one bad experience with one bad teacher, one semester, yeah, it, it can really take the wind out of your sleep. Calculus is my first semester of college and I, at Purdue Fort Wayne, calculus made me decide I'm going to study something else. <laughs> yeah. 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 I took a, I took quite a few um, math classes, and I feel like every time the conversation with the professor at the beginning of the year was, I don't feel very comfortable, yeah. but I'll try, I'll do my best. Yeah. I, I, I'll i make you the promise that I'll, I'll do all the homework, I'll try my best, but I just don't think I'm going to do very well. But uh, I think having just having that conversation made the professors, I, in fact, I know, I'm convinced, and I, I know there was at least one professor who he started that year or that semester, he he curved everything so that I could get like uh, if I didn't do very well he would curve it based sure. on my score or <laughs> he so wouldn't like you he was trying to figure out some way to <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's probably what and, it was and that does work for motivation as well you know, I do tell the kids that you know listen if you don't want to have me again just pass and then you move on to somebody else yeah. you know, so that, there is some motivation on both sides of that so yeah. Uh, what? So your eyesight was clearly a pivotal moment for your sure. trajectory. Yeah. Did you have, sure. What are some other pivotal moments that got you to where you're at now? Ah, uh, man, that's a that's a, a great question. I would say probably the other pivotal thing is from the coaching side of it was um, uh, I did a lot of stuff um, through with the Spice Field House in Fort Wayne through their basketball, uh, and it was my uh, my Sunday school teacher Gerald Hershey. Uh, he got me involved in that, uh, going down, working basketball tournaments. Uh, and then the next thing you know, it led to, he introduced me to, uh, Bill Hensley, uh, who was the big started Tom Spies started Spies, but Bill Hensley was kind of his right hand guy. There it was a t-shirt guy. He made t-shirts, um, for all the tournaments and things. And he put on, he hosted a tournament and then he was coaching as well. 
uh, for the AU, and he really got me involved with coaching, you know, and basically kind of said, hey, you want to do this, here you go, there's your team, go, you know, and coach them and, and stuff, and I'll be here to help you out and, you know, and things like that. So he was really a, a pivotal help in getting into the basketball coaching to seeing, you know, it's not just coaching sixth grade. These are <laughs> these are 17, 18-year-old kids, you know, there's a different style of coaching up there than it is at the middle school level and, and things, and so you know, that was really a pivotal thing there that I kind of got tossed to the wolves a little bit, you know, had the feet held to the fire and, you know, paid off. You know, he's like, you got to know now if this is something that you want to do. If you don't want to do it, it's better to know here than when somebody's, you know, paying you big time money to coach and and you're miserable for half the year because it's not really what you want to do. And, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. He was, he was a great mentor in the coaching part of it. Uh you know, he had a lot of contacts with a lot of college coaches and things like that. And uh, and so, you know, helping me when I went down to Purdue, uh, you know, I, I kind of got in with, with – I really wasn't part of the basketball team down there, but I, I knew those guys, you know, that was assistant coaches and things that I could always jump into, hey, if I need a little bit of help here, a little bit of help here. So the connections that he kind of opened me up to were crucial in helping me with the coaching aspect of it. And um, – you know, it's always nice when you have a guy like that writing you a recommendation letter to, mm-hmm. <laughs> to get a coaching job. That always helps out. So, which group of uh, kids did you prefer to coach? So those older, older ones, or sort of the middle school, or you know, I, I when I first started out, you know, everybody was gung ho. You know, I, you know, I, th- I thought I knew it all. You know, I thought I knew it all at about 18, 19 years old. You know, all I can coach with the best of them. You know? <laughs> so. Uh, but I started out as freshman. I started out coaching freshman, and I think that was that was the right. Looking back on it now, I think that was the, extremely the right level for me to start at, um, and that, and then you know, then I got my feet wet. I went from freshman to varsity, and uh, what a big jump, you know. And I think the nice part about that was is I understand what the kids do as well. You know, me coaching freshman to varsity was a huge jump with a lot more responsibility, a lot more of this, that, and the other. You know, different offenses, defenses, but the kids are also are also in that as well. You know. Sending a kid from freshman to varsity is just like, man, <laughs> you know. So I kind of know what they go through as far as the the extra prep time, the more uh, high paced offense, different different types of defensive schemes that you're going to run, and and uh, that. But uh, you know, so I, I think it started out at the right at the right point there. Now though, you know, now 42, 43 years old, I kind of like coaching JV. <laughs> you know, I kind of like that. You know, it's. Uh, uh, basketball's gotten more, you know, when I started, it really wasn't into the end of the year round stuff. Now, you know, you kind of coach from, uh, about September, you know, you start getting some workouts in. And then when, you know, state tournament was over in March, you were kind of done for a while, maybe a couple things over the summer, but now, man, to just keep pace with everything, you know, with, you know, if the school corporation next to yours is, is practicing over the summer, by God, we're going to be in practicing over the summer, you know, we, you know, we just have to do that just to, just to stay up with the competition and things. But, um, but no, I absolutely love, love coaching JV. Um, you know, love taking those kids in a little bit and working with them and just getting them ready, you know, and, it, and if, when they leave me, if they go up to varsity and they're having success up there, then I know what we're doing at JV is working. And so that's, that's kind of the, the big thing for me right now where I'm at. And, and the varsity coach asked me numerous times, he said, Hey, cause you, you want to get back into it, you know, get back into varsity? And I said, no, I think I'm fine right here. <laughs> I think I'm fine right here. So, but, uh, How much of your coaching leads into parenting and vice versa? Oh, uh, I think the patience factor. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the patience factor has to be there, you know. Um, coaching, parenting, you know, I, I think teachers, I, I, I think that all ties together. I, you know, I think every day you're teaching somebody something. You know, whether it's a real simple task or something maybe a little bit more that takes a little bit more time for them to see results more than just in a couple seconds there. And, you know, I, I think it's helped me with, with my son. I, I, I think the patience part has really helped me dealing with the goats. <laughs> they, they don't always do what you want them to do and, and stuff. And I even catch myself, you know, I admit it. You know, I catch myself, you get a little frustrated, you get a little upset. But I think just kind of going back to that coaching aspect of, you know, hey, Calm down, take a step back, take a deep breath, and then go back in it again and attack the problem again. And you're just going to see it in a lot different light, you know. 
we do that all the time, you know, in games at halftime, you know, whatever, you know, it's a little bit higher pace in a basketball game than it is dealing with out. But, you know, even, even with dealing with my son, it's like, okay, you're going to get away from dad for about five minutes <laughs> and you're going to come back and then we're going to talk, you know, and it, and it, and it all works out. Both, both sides get a, get a chance just to relax a little bit, you know, take a deep breath and then you come back and you can normally solve the problem pretty easy and stuff. And, but, you know, I, I guess, I guess I'm pretty, pretty proud of my kid. You know, he's, he's never a, a big, hasn't been a big problem, you know, so uh, he, he's done, he's done a great job, graduated this year. So I couldn't cool. be more proud of that and, and stuff. So the first kind of chapter, we survived the first chapter of his life. You know, he <laughs> survived it. Uh, my wife and I both survived it. So that that's a plus. And, and we're, we're excited about what he's going to do, you're going to do after high school. So have you ever thrown a chair? No, no, I, I never, I never, uh, never pulled a Bobby Knight. But the funny yeah. part was, a lot of the places that I've been, the chairs have been like bolted together, uh, you know. Okay. So like, you have to take the whole row, and there's always somebody sitting on it. So yeah. you, know, you never get you that. You can't have that dramatic display, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But the kid, the uh, when Coach Knight threw the chair, mm-hmm. the kid, the kid that was on the line. I coached his nephew when I was at Tri West, and that was the first thing he told me. He said, "Do you remember when the coach said, yeah, that was my uncle. That was my uncle.'" <laughs> <laughs> so okay, all right, so oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. yeah, funny. Yeah. Now, do you just have one son? Yes, and yeah. just such just, a... just got one kid. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. We we always tell him, you know, it's just uh, yeah, you know, he's too much of a problem when he was two that we wanted, didn't want to have another one. But uh, you know, <laughs> so, but, uh, but no. Um, you know, like I said, I couldn't be more proud of, uh, of what he's done so far and stuff. And school's not as, uh, you know, he, he wasn't a strong student uh, in school. Um, you know, he, he got his welding certification through the Pathways cool. program at Wallace C. And so he, that's kind of the next step of what he wants to do. And, and he's just absolutely thrilled about that. You know, I, I think, I really think that the Wallace C program is probably what kept him wanting to go to school during the day because it, it, it surely wasn't an English or math class, you know, and I even knew his math teacher. So, you know, he still wasn't <laughs> excited about that, you know, you know but, uh, uh, but uh, no, but uh, again, I, I, we're just, we're looking forward to what next thing that he wants to do now. Yeah. And so, so we're pretty, we're excited about that for him. So you're not that far off being empty nesters. No, right? we're not. We're pretty no, close. we're not. Yeah. Yeah. Got a plan. Oh, like, what do you, how is how are you going to make that transition? What are you going to do? I, I don't know. <laughs> Eat more I, goats. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> if it was up to my wife, probably. So, um, but, uh, no, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure that for a while, um, you know, I think for a while he'll probably, he'll still pop in and be around, but you know, mm-hmm. we, uh, you know, I know that one of these days, you know, he's going to be out there and, and rightfully so he should be, you know, uh, you know, he's, he's got to make some choices on what life route that he wants to do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and if it's, you know, if, if it's raising dairy goats, then it's raising dairy goats. If, if it's not, you know, and he wants to do something else, you know, that's, that's the, that's the blessing of, of being able to choose your own path, so to speak. So, um, but, uh, but either way, you know, either way, yeah, you know, I'm probably going to be the first one that's probably going to miss him not being around every day, you know, mm-hmm. but, uh, the great thing with cell phones and stuff, I can call him whenever. <laughs> so, yeah. so that, that's, that's pretty nice. But, uh, now, and your father-in-law is Cal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't yeah. like. I don't like saying that a yeah. lot. But, uh, <laughs> so now it's on the record. Yeah. Now it's out there yeah. for, for. You gotta be careful what you're saying <laughs> about Cal, though, because yeah. you do still want Christmas presents. I think. So. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I still tell him I'm his favorite son-in-law. So uh, you know, he hasn't told me no yet. So <laughs> like, that'll be nice. Is that how you heard about Gateway? Was through Cal? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Cal did this when he he started um, uh, when he retired. Uh, the day that he retired from teaching, uh, he was driving home and saw the sign on 30 for transport drivers. This was back when you guys were still there in Warsaw, mm-hmm. yeah. um, just right outside of town there on the, on the side of the road and, and stuff. And, uh, and he pulled in and next thing you know, he was, he was delivering trailers. You know, we were just kind of, you know, I was kind of shaking my head and, and a little <laughs> bit and my wife was going, Oh my goodness, what's going to, you know, and, <laughs> And stuff, but uh, but he's enjoyed it. Uh, he he's enjoyed uh, every minute of it. He's he loves it. He he talks about it a lot, you know. And, and that's and that is what got me into it. And, and we did some tandem drives right off the start. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't I didn't have a vehicle to uh, to pull trailers at that time. But um, uh, we went all over the place. Went to Newfoundland. Went to 
uh, out to Washington State, went went all over the place with him and stuff, and and I enjoyed it because I, I like to travel. You know, I like to get out and and travel and um, you know see the country while you can and and stuff. So this was a great opportunity for me to do that. And then next thing you know, I think it's been seven years. I got my own truck and and off we're going. I think he's been doing it for about. 15 years probably, maybe probably, probably. and you've time. been doing it for seven i think it's been seven wow. yeah i think Jeez. seven years and awesome i think uh, on with my own truck but i know i borrowed uh cal's vehicle yeah. a couple times and and was off and going and and things and so yeah so it's been i've been kind of around for probably about 15 but just Do haven't you, done yeah. it as as yeah. much you know except over the past few years so so where where's your favorite place that you've been to do it with an rv oh that's a that's a that's a great question. Um, I would probably favorite place. I you know I like going out west. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I like going out west. Um, you know, going up into going up into Canada and Alberta. You know, that's just that's just some nice. You drive through some nice scenery up there through Montana and stuff. So that that's kind of, I guess, an area. You know, you know. I, I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of people say, "Oh, I like going down south and going to Florida." Ah, you know, and I, and I'm not big on that. You know, mm-hmm. um, but uh, but no, I enjoy going out west. Uh, it's just it's just a nice drive through nice scenery. Anytime you can drive there on 70 through Colorado, um, into into the canyons there and out and and stuff is uh, is really really nice. You know, you kind of I always. I always just kind of almost put the blinders on when I'm pulling the trailer out so that I make sure I'm not looking all over the place yeah. too much. Uh, uh, but then coming back, you know, you, you take a little bit of time. You, there's there's a couple rest areas down there in the canyon. I always pull off to walk around a little bit and just see the sights. But um, but I would say probably out that way is nice is is nice is a nice drive. And and even down into Utah through uh, through Arizona there, there's another little canyon there for the. 20 minutes you're, you're in Arizona yeah, that's pretty cool stuff. Um, and that's that's a pretty nice place and then you get into and I, and I think the place that probably stunned me the most was the first time that I went to California uh, I hadn't been to California in a while and, and since Purdue went to the Rose Bowl uh, we went out uh, we went out when they went to the Rose Bowl but uh, hadn't been out there in a while and just kind of stunning on how hilly you know uh, California is and it's really nice scenery out there it's it's real nice on the scenery and driving in through Nevada there and and up into California is, is really nice. It is. And it's so like, especially out West is like, uh, we grew up out West. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't that novel. It wasn't that interesting yeah. uh, because that's just, we just grew up in the, the dirt there. Yeah. <laughs> but then you come out here and we live here for a while. Then when we go back, it just is, it's kind of, it's just such a stark contrast. Yeah. The, the, just the landscape. And then I remember when that first time I took my wife to where, to one of the towns that we grew up in, and of course, I have all these fond memories, and you know, you kind of romanticize your yeah. memories. Uh, I just was like the, the coolest little town, and we got there. And she's like, "It's so brown. It's just everything. It's just everything is dirt." Yeah. So no, oh, that's true. But isn't it just beautiful? And she was like, "No, it's not." <laughs> no. But uh, so maybe it's an acquired taste. But yeah. there's just some, like Southern Utah's got a lot of really pretty yeah. mm-hmm. landscapes. Yeah. It's a pretty cool spot. I agree. That little stretch in Arizona, that little like northwest corner. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty cool. I think they filmed some movies out there. Uh, they, yeah, they? If, I'm pretty if sure. not, they need to. Yeah, you know, oh, it's yeah. probably yeah. where they do all like the alien landings. Yeah, and stuff, the alien Star Wars. Or, I think, yeah, they film some stuff. If they're out there. not in Yemen. They're uh, yeah. yeah, they're filming over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember who did your orientation? That have been, <sighs> I think, seven years ago. That was. Um, uh, it was the guy that, who was here that passed away. Dave. Dave. Okay, so it's yeah, Dave. Dave gotcha. did that. And then um, I forget who did dispatch. Um, he left. Um, what was his name? Gary. Gary. Yeah, yeah, Gary was the dispatch guy. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it was it was Dave and Gary there. And I remember, I remember the, the orientation. We were there in Warsaw. Yeah. Uh, and so I went in there and it was me. Might have been only me. Me and maybe maybe one other guy might've been another guy in there too. And, uh, and, but, uh, the orientation was, Dave was just talking. He was just talking about driving, delivering trailers. You know, that was, yeah. that was, that was kind of it, you know, Hey, you got to fill out these kind of forms here, this paperwork here and, um, and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, I think we were in there. I want to say we might've been in there two and a half hours <laughs> of, yeah. of Dave, just, just sharing stories and just talking about different things that, that was out on the road and, and stuff. And, and I, and maybe, 
I don't know if Kevin, there was two guys that were there. I don't know if Kevin was one of them that was there or not. Yeah, he might have been at the time. It, pro- I mean, if you know Kevin very well, he's up and doing stuff all oh, the yeah, time. Oh, so yeah, yeah, He yeah. probably wouldn't have been there for two and a half hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but then we went out and did a little, did a little drive around, uh, did a little kind of drive around the block, hooked up a trailer, and that was and that was pretty much it. That was the orientation. So. Okay. Do you, beforehand, I guess, having done some trips with Cal, you probably yeah. were pretty prepared. Do you feel? Did you feel like you were prepared before uh, you started I, doing it? I think I think for the hookup part, you know, because that's that's kind of all that, you know, that, that I when I get with Cal, that would be it. But you know, just kind of the other things that, oh, you know, here's your box. Make sure you have you know fire extinguisher. Make sure you have yeah. extra fuses. Make sure you have you know your triangles, your square, you know, for emergency stuff. You know, first aid kit, all that. All that extra stuff that goes in that I really didn't see when, you know, when I just go bum along ride with Cal and, and mm-hmm. drive tandem that way since he had everything in his truck and that. But, uh, you know, it's just a few of those things that you, you kind of pick up along the way like, oh, you know, it would be nice if I would have this or that's a great idea to have, you know, like extra blocks in your vehicle. You know, I, I don't know how many times I've been either one of the lots. And I go in there, and the jack won't jack it up high enough to get on the truck, you know. So you got to have yeah. some extra blocks in there, and then you're looking around. Oh, okay. Next time, I got to remember blocks. So I'm not running around trying to find <laughs> find extra blocks, you know, to just to to jack it up. So, but you gotta have to be a little bit creative with stuff, you know. Things things are gonna happen out there, uh, you know, on the road, and things. You just gotta have to be a little bit creative about, you know, dealing with things, you know, and stuff. And so, you know, and just make sure you got enough tools. <laughs> I mm-hmm. think that's. That was kind of the other big thing is, uh, you know, do you have tools that you can fix almost anything, but not everything? (laughs) So, you know, and then so that was kind of probably the surprise that, okay, really need to look into this here. And, you know, your startup costs are always a little bit more, you know, but once you get into it and that, you know, it pretty much takes care of its takes care of itself then. And and it's always nice when you get, you know, pull into for an inspection or something at a way station and they say, hey, you got everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. That is That's, nice. That is nice. Yeah. I'm a little too nervous to ask. I've never been inspected, and I almost yeah. want to ask, but because uh, I'd like to see if I could pass it. Because then, I, if you ask the wrong guy at the wrong time, you yeah. say, you and if I don't it. pass, like then that won't be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Having yeah. Yeah. anyway. No, but uh, yeah, up in Canada, they just pull you in to see if you're hooked up correctly. They don't. They don't. They, Mm-hmm. No care about fire extinguisher or any of that other stuff. They just want to see if you're hooked up correctly. So you pull in there. There's a little booth there. The guy, I don't even think the guy didn't even come out of the booth. He just had me like a little bit farther, a little bit farther. Stop. <laughs> and then he just looked, you're good. Go ahead. Yeah. So that was it. Yeah. A lot of people have had problems with Canada. I've been to Canada a few times. Never had a problem. You've been to Canada a lot. Have you ever had any border problems? Oh, sometimes, sometimes the depending on who the broker is with the paperwork, you know, you have mm-hmm. to go inside a couple of times. It especially was during COVID. Yeah. Uh, during COVID, because the places up there are not open, so you always got to make a phone call and touch base with somebody else who's going to transfer you to somebody else, and then finally, you know, finally you'll get you'll get that around. But um, no, really, uh, going into Canada, uh, the customs officials are are really nice. Um, you go through Port Huron there, you just got to pay to go across the bridge. Um, but one time I was stopped there, uh, they had me pull over to the side there, uh, shut the vehicle off, give them all the keys. And then they go back and check the trailer and make sure uh, they must've been looking for something that day or whatever and, and things. And, um, but you know, most of those guys have a, somewhat of a personality, you know? So I always asked the guy, I said, Hey, now you looked at, it, you thinking about buying one? No, nope. <laughs> you know, and then, you know, <laughs> I even asked him, I said, hey, did you lock it up then? He, oh, no, I didn't. Here, give me the keys. He goes, I'll go back and lock the trailer for you and stuff like that. So they're they're pretty friendly guys up there. You know, they're not they're not out there to give you much of a hard time. I've had more issues coming back into the United States than I have uh, going into Canada. It just seems like it kind of drags there a little bit. Some of those guys have zero personality, <laughs> you know, and it's like, you know, and it, you know, sometimes they get a little nitpicky, you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're yeah. really looking for something. And, and at the border crossing, especially at the Port Huron, you know, I've spent anywhere from five minutes to 45 minutes setting up the window for the guy asking me questions, the same question over and over again. It's like, you know, what, what are you waiting on, you know, and, and things, but, um, uh, but you know, that's a big one going up to, up to Ontario. Um, I go through Montana a lot uh, up there. It's, it's pretty much in, you know, they just kind of take a look, stamp the paperwork, where are you going? And, and they're pretty good there. And even coming back, um, 
those guys are a little bit more have a little bit more personality out there, uh, you know, and stuff. And they kind of they kind of laugh a little bit with you, joke around, and things. So, uh, and it's pretty. It keep, they keep the traffic flowing, I guess. You know, they don't they don't hold you up too long at, at those. But uh, but all in all, you know, they're doing their job. You know, mm-hmm. you know, we can't we can't argue with that. You know, they're they're keeping us safe on what we're doing. You know, for importing things in the U.S. So. Uh, you know, I just kind of have to go up there with the mindset they're just doing their job. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have a hard time not. Thanks, eh? Like, I, their <laughs> accent is so positive. Yeah. Like, when I'm going up to Nova Scotia, and you just, like, I just stepped out. I hope they don't think I'm making fun of them. I just, for some reason, their accent is so contagious. Probably because they're yeah. like, thanks, bro. Yeah. No, that's not. That's on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it's this very contagious accent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got stopped in Nova Scotia. They checked my logs. Did they? Oh, did they? And they, uh, <clears throat> I mean, he was friendly enough, but I was there for a while. And then he was questioning me on on uh, on some particular um, rules, and uh, they're different. Some of them were different there. He's like, you, "Do you have twenty one days of logs?" I was like, uh, "No, I've got fourteen though. You need to have twenty one days of logs." Yeah. Okay. Well, not out at home, so sorry, <laughs> I don't. He said, yeah. "Okay. Well, here you have to have." 21 days. And it's 14. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Here, it's America's 7. Or, well, I guess kind of 8. Or, no, sorry. Yeah, it was that way. It was oh, 7 and yeah. seven and 14. It was 14 days that they wanted. Yeah. And then here was, and I, I only have 7. And uh, he's like, are you sure? I was like, well, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I was, I did our compliance for a little while. So, I mean, <laughs> I think, I think I have a pretty good grasp yeah. of the compliance. And then go in and chat with all the guys and come back out and ask for something else and but it, but it was fine. And it, it's going through, I know for a lot of drivers, going through a way station can be really stressful. Yeah. And man, I've been in the scenario where I was really nervous. Yeah. But if I have it, if, I, if I'm confident in everything that I have, that I have what I'm supposed to have, mm-hmm. I, I don't, doesn't faze me at all. Right. When I'm questioning whether I have everything or I've done it right or I'm not cut up on my logs. Yeah. Man, I am just sweating. Yeah. And and I'm sure they can see that, and I just need, like, so I, I've learned since then, just take the time to get prepared. Yeah. And then I just don't live in stress all the time. Right. The perpetual right. state yeah. of, if I get pulled over, I'm going to, what's going to happen? You know, yeah. the, you know, the funny thing you say, the way station uh, went to, went up to Washington State, and there, Spokane, there's a, there's a way station going into Washington. And, uh, and I already had planned from where I was, where I was going to stop at night, and I was just going to get there. And in, in the I was going to be about ten minutes early to the eleven hour of driving to get in, and, and there was a pilot, there was a flying J station there. Uh, I'd been there a couple times before. It's right, it's about three minutes, five minutes from the way station. So I was perfect. Okay, way station's open. Okay, sure. So I go in there, go across the scales, come around for inspection. Ah, oh! so yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay, is he going to make me stay down? Because I'll be over. By the time you by the time I'm done with the inspection, so I was like, oh, so I'm sitting there the whole time going, okay, am I gonna be here overnight or am I gonna actually get down to the? Yeah. To the so he gave it to me and, and he asked where I was going. I just told him I said I'm going up to the to the Flying J station just up the road here uh, for the day. And he said, okay. He goes, have a good trip. He goes, see you later. And so I was like, okay, but yeah, that was a long one because he took all my stuff. Took it inside, you know, did all through all the logs, and I came back out about thirty minutes later, and I'm going, oh man, <laughs> you know, so, so, but it was nice. He he let me go up there, and, and everything worked out well for that. But mm-hmm. uh, but you get a little nervous when you're kind of pushing your time a little bit, and it's like, ooh, I know I can get there, but if everything kind of has to fall into place a little bit in order to in order to do that, but, yeah. Uh, and I've I've never cheated on my logs, just never cheated on my logs. But um, <laughs> if you were to, <laughs> he's got that on record now. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. It just makes you yeah. That it, is there something that you forgot to change? You know, when you pull up to the way station, and uh, it was just too stressful for me. Just I, I don't right. know. I'd rather it's, just. It, it's just too much thinking. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. You know. It's too much thinking for for guys that actually do that. That will you know kind of manipulate their logs a little bit. You know. It's just too much thinking. It's just a lot easier. Write it down. Okay, here we are. Here we are. Whatever. You know? Yeah. And the nice part is, I, I know for me, when, I, when I'm when i out driving, is I try to drive kind of the semis schedule. Yeah. Um, you know? And so I, I'm kind of up early in the morning. I'm kind of down earlier in the afternoon, you know, maybe 6, 7 o'clock. Because it, it, 
if you don't get down by them when the semis get down, you're not going to find a spot. Yep. And and that's kind of the big thing, you know. Uh, you know, I don't mind staying in a rest area, you know, overnight. It's just to think there's just no food there. <laughs> you know, there's no mm-hmm. place to get something to yeah. eat. You know, you can get out and kind of stretch your legs a little bit, but it's pretty much just a kind of a bathroom stop there. Um, but uh, but if you want to get into the bigger truck stops, um, pilots, flying jays, things like that, man, you gotta you got to kind of be down about 6 o'clock if you want to find a spot. And even as you're going, you know, 3, 4 o'clock, you just kind of pass a couple and you look in there, oh, man, they're filling up. <laughs> you know, they're mm-hmm. already filling up. And, and so you kind of... You know, that kind of makes me think, again. You know, okay, do I want to stop a little early tonight? Do I want to go the full, t- you know, full drive? You know, where would this put me for tomorrow? You know, type mm-hmm. deal. So it kind of gets you start to think a little bit. But, um, uh, you know, a couple things that I always look for uh, when I'm out driving. Number one, I, I always like looking for a, a place that has a restaurant, you know, either either an Iron Skillet or a Denny's, um, you know, and, and a place that has RVs. If they advertise RVs, it's nice to have RV parking up front. And that is ideal. Yeah. That is ideal. Uh, you know, I know when I first started out, you know, it was it was a little bit intimidating parking back with the with the mm-hmm. with the semis. Yeah. You know, I, and I think a lot of the guys starting out are mm-hmm. like, mm, you know, I don't I don't really want to park all the way back there with the semis. You know, it's it is it's a little bit uh, nerve wracking. But um, you know, after you've done it for a while, it, you kind of feel a little bit more comfortable back there. Yeah. Uh, you know, parking. But I always like the RV parking. It's normally right up front of the building. There's plenty of lights there. You know, there's always a little bit somebody coming in and out, you know, normal time. Nobody, nobody's going to bother with you. Um, you know, normally when I wake up in the morning, there's three or four other guys that are parked either right next to me or, you know, around the area. So uh, that's always kind of the big things that I look for, uh, you know, and, and I got the Pilot and Loves app. So I can always pull it up and see which ones have RV parking or RV pumps or, mm-hmm. or something of that nature. Uh, it just it just makes it a little bit nice. It's a little bit more comfortable traveling, a little bit less stress. You know, if you kind of, you know, have an idea of where you're going to be stopping at night, you know, and, and a lot of things can change in that road construction, just random traffic. You know, if you got to go through some cities or something like that, you know, and if you hit cities at the wrong time or you hit Chicago at any time, <laughs> uh, you know, you're normally going to add about 30 minutes to your trip yeah. or 45. But uh, what are some other like tricks or tips that you would give a new driver? Um, you know, I, I think, I think the big one is, uh, you know, just kind of you know, plan on, you know, you're hoping your trip's going to be uneventful, you know, that, that's kind of the hope, but, but if you're driving a lot over the summer, you always got to plan on road construction, you know, so you might, you know, you, you may be a little ambitious and you think, oh, Hey, I'm going to drive the full, you know, 11 hours. I'm going to get from here to here. I'm going to do this, you know, always plan on about 45 minutes to an hour, just a slow down road construction. And if you're going to hit a lot of big cities, you know, always plan on that as well. Cause it's inevitable. You know, you're always going to get a lot of traffic in the cities. Um, you know, taking the bypass around the cities is a lot of options, uh, to do, you know, to help that. But again, you hit some of those bypasses at a wrong time, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be sitting out there when people are driving downtown or, or free flowing. So, but always plan on extra time, you know, always got to plan on that, you know, and then, and then, you know, be prepared for that up front. I think, you know, if you have all your stuff together, you know, I think it's a lot smooth sailing, but just, just be prepared, you know, kind of over prepare a little bit. Um, you know, I, I think some things that we forget about, you know, is a little bit, a little bit of the truck maintenance, you know, I, I think sometimes, you know, even though you do your PTI in the morning, I think sometimes if you're on the road, that gets a little rushed, you know, or at night, mm-hmm. and I'm just exhausted you know, and, and it's a real quick three minute, you know, yep, the engine's still there and you close the hood and you go on, you know, but, but really be, you know, really be cautious of your tires, especially, you know, I, I think those are some things that we forget about until we have a problem, blow out a flat and then, oh my goodness, you know, this one's, uh, this has a flat, but these other two here are really bad, you know, so kind of plan on prep that at the beginning. Um, and I would say have a good maintenance place that you go. You know, I, I go over to Garrett Ford. Um, that's where I take my vehicles. Uh, they treat me right over there. Uh, but they all, they know what I do. Uh, I'm on the road a lot. So when I do an oil change, they're always checking my brakes. They're always checking my tires. You know, they're always going through, hey, your, your hoses are good. Your battery's charged. Do you want me to fill up your def? You know, that type of stuff. So, so if you have a good mechanic or some good place that you can take your vehicle, you know, you're a continual customer because if you're doing this full time, you're going to be in there once or twice a month. 
Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to put enough mileage on your vehicle that you're going to be in there. You're going to get to know them and, and, you know, just talk to them, just tell them what you're doing. And a lot of times they'll take a little bit of extra time with your vehicle just to make sure that you're safe out there. Um, when you come back and, and, and they've, they've done that at Garrett Ford. Uh, it's, it's a great experience over there. They do a really nice job, um, over there. And the nice part is if you take it over there enough, and you call them, hey, I need an oil change. I'll be home this time. A lot of times they'll try to fit you in, you know, and I think I think that's a key there. So, you know, some of those things aren't don't have to do with physically sitting in the vehicle driving, you know. But, uh, you know, if you're going to do this, you're probably a good driver. You know, you're getting out there. You've done enough of the driving. It's just some of the other stuff that I think you got to be prepped for before you actually get out there and hit the road. Um, you know, and then, you know, it, it go with your gut. You know, you know, your gut tells you a lot. You know, if you pull in some night and you're looking around there and your gut's telling you this may not be the best place to stay, I would go somewhere else. You know, I, I think you just got to follow your gut, you know, and just understand, you know, you're there, you're taking care of the trailer. You know, that, that trailer is your number one priority that you're pulling, you know, until you unhook it at the dealer or wherever, or like the one I took down in Tennessee, the construction <laughs> site. Yeah. Um, you know, but that's your, that's your priority, you know, and, and and stuff so you know you just kind of have to take care of that but just just follow your gut it, you know it's it's not going to steer you wrong if it looks a little shady or uneasy there i'd be heading on out and finding a different place or you know down there down the road that you just feel comfortable staying you know and i think that's a big thing if you're comfortable with what you're doing out there then your trip's going to be a lot better you're going to be more alert and you know the the chances of you arriving safe and coming back safe are pretty what do you listen to while you're going down the road? Oh man, what do I listen to? Music, uh, books, what? Is... Uh, you know, I, I I haven't really gotten into the the, the books on tape. You know, uh, <clears throat> you know, my wife tells me I need to I need to do some books on tape. You know, she doesn't think I'm a very good reader. Sometimes <laughs> she doesn't think I'm a very good listener. But still, uh, you know, that that's for a different podcast probably. So, uh, but uh, but anyhow, no, I, uh, I I kind of scroll through there. You know, I, I listen to country. Um, country, I, I do, I do listen to some, uh, some of the gospel radio too, you know, just kind of what comes in there. Um, and then, you know, if I, if I get a good 80 station, you know, and I, I it, it's just been rough with the 80 stations though, you know, about the time I get them to come in, I'm out of the range, you know, so I get mm-hmm. listed about three songs and then it's, that's all <laughs> something else. But, uh, you know, those are probably the three things. And then, uh, of course, around noontime afternoon, uh, you know, I, I switch her over to the AM. I listen to some talk radio. And stuff like that and um, you know just kind of that's kind of where you get your news a, a little bit to know what's happening out in the world you know the many times I've come home my wife goes did you hear about this or did you hear about this you I didn't hear anything <laughs> you know you know you, you just you just don't kind of gather that you know uh, and stuff but um, but yeah those are kind of the, the, the things I listen to you know as I'm going through there and and I've been out enough to know that okay if I you know copy down some radio stations. Okay. So this here, if I get, you know, if I get down to this part again, this radio station is this, this, so you kind of have a, a little bit of a list to put in there, but, um, but yeah, that's kind of, you know, Ty, they have this cool invention called a cell phone that gives you the ability to basically listen to whatever you want. So you right. can listen to your dream eighties radio station. Right. All, all day. All you know, <laughs> you know, it's funny. We just got, I, my son was the big technology. He's the big technology guy, you know, and 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 stuff. And I'm kind of, I kind of grew. We didn't have cell phones, you know. Never, never had cell phones. Yeah. I, I had one, and and I think my mom threatened me within inches of my life that if I ever used it for something other than an emergency, I was basically dead, you know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so I didn't have it, and it was one of those big ones that flipped down, pull the antenna out. I mean, it was the old school uh, cell phone. And so last November was the first iPhone I've ever had. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My wife switched jobs and she said, you know, we need to get for my new job here. I, I do need to get a good cell phone. What's the, okay. All right. So let's go. <laughs> so we're there and stuff. And, and my son, I was kind of relying on him to help me with the phone. <laughs> Just tell me how to make a phone call. Yeah. You know, that's where we start. Okay. All right. Fine. So we got into some texting and stuff and, and he said, and so I said, well, what's the, the smiley face thing? And he goes, oh, that has a bunch of emojis, you know, on it. I had no clue. <laughs> yeah. I had no clue, you know. So, uh, and then he goes, well, it's voice activated. So I'm there going, smiley face, smiley face. And he goes, no, 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 your text. You can push this thing here and then you can talk and it'll put it up there to send. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, yes, I am, I am cell phone illiterate, you know, so I, I can make a call. 
and I can text now, and I'm I'm a lot better now, and but uh, but just never had, you know, we never had internet on the phone when I had the cell phone, you know, yeah. and, and he's. You know, he just shakes his head, and, and the kids at school do the same way because they ask me, are you on this, and are you on that? And he's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> They're like, really? You're not? No. I say, I keep telling not that important, you know, but not that important that I need to be on all this stuff. I said, I would I would have zero clue how to use it. You know? yes. <laughs> well, then maybe Spotify is not for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so you said something I have no clue about. So, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I try to get my dad on that. Like, hey, Dad, you know, you can pick whatever you want, if you, you know, you know, I'll, and I'll even say, I'll yeah. tell him about this book. It's like, you need to read this book or whatever. And I put it on there. Yeah. Uh, and the, then I get in the truck. He's listening to Road Dog Radio. So, <laughs> yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. that's fine. <laughs> but for me, like, I like listening to what I want to listen to. And so I pick it. But <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I get bored with the radio. I don't know. Radio DJs. I have a hard time with radio DJs. Yeah. 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 Some, so, so you get some good ones every now and then. And then you get some that are just kind of, you can tell they're probably at the end of their shift and they're just ready to go <laughs> today. I just yeah. don't, yeah, I don't really know if I see the the reason anymore for a radio, for a radio DJ. Yeah. Just, everything can be automated. I mean, maybe that sounds really bad and there's probably some people that are part-time radio DJs. That... For all of our part-time radio DJ drivers <laughs> yes. out there, yeah. I apologize. <laughs> but I don't, I mean, I, I just would assume that the way technology is going, it's, yeah. I don't know, easier to not have one. Yeah. But. But for all the ties out there that aren't using their cell phone right, and still right, need that's to... Right, that's right. Still love the radio. There's yeah. still some of us out there. Yeah. So there still is a yep, need, I guess. Yep. Well, what does the next sort of five years look like for you? Um, you know, in the, in the next five years, you know, I'm really hoping to get back. Uh, you know, I, I did do the AD thing uh, a while ago. It's been four years, I guess, you know, since I did the AD thing. And, and I would really like to get back into that. Uh, Sorry, the a athletic, athletic director. director. Oh, okay. yeah, yes, yes, yeah, 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 and um, you know, but it was nice. Um, you know, I, when my son was in junior high, you know, I was the athletic director at Central Noble, and uh, you know, I just missed a lot of events. Uh, just missed a lot of events and and things, and so I, you know, I kind of knew when he got into high school that, you know, I something was probably going to have to give. You know, he, he's a three sport athlete. You know, so he's he's doing something all the time. And things so it, this was really nice the last four years uh being able to go over to west noble just to kind of take that assistant ad's role uh i was be able to be at all of all of logan's events and things didn't miss a thing so i i was really happy about that um but now now that he's graduated uh really looking in hopefully over the next five years to get back into that uh again um you know i really enjoy doing that that type of stuff you know just you know getting things set up for events and and uh you know, kind of doing the behind the scenes stuff, you know, I, I'm not one that, hey, look at me type deal, you know, I, uh, never been that, but I, but I always just like being behind the scenes stuff, doing stuff for the athletes, doing stuff for the kids around school. And, and a lot of times doing some things that they don't expect that somebody would, would do that, or somebody would take the time to, to do that, to do that type of stuff for them. So it's just, you know, anytime you can do that and anytime you can make, you know, make the kids feel good about stuff. Uh, I, you know, I, th I think that's important. Uh, I, I really think that's important and things. And so, so I kind of want to get back into doing that and over the next five years, hoping to, hoping to do that, you know, and anybody from West Noble that's listening, you know, I will be back this year. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but like I said, they've, they've been great over there at West Noble, uh, you know, allowing me to come over there and, and do, you know, and do some of that stuff with athletic director and fitting that into the schedule with teaching and things and being able to coach again, it's been, has been really, really great. Yeah. Well, before we kind of wrap up, I just wanted to make sure um, didn't fail to mention how grateful we are to have you as a driver. Oh, uh, honestly, we, thank you. Thank we you. we, we love when you come in. Yeah. You're extremely helpful. Some of those Canadian units are every once in a while we'll have a bunch and they're just harder to get rid of. Yeah. And uh, I know you like going there. So yeah. yeah. So yeah. you're you're one yeah. of the dispatchers. <laughs> uh, go to people, especially for a Canadian run. But yeah. but but more than that, just the. Uh, yeah, your your attitude that you have, and when you come in, we we really appreciate you. Well, thank you. you do uh, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. This is kind of a shock when you asked me to be on a podcast. So I do have to tell you, this is my first podcast. So uh -oh. so uh, you know, don't you uh, think that your your path to fame has <laughs> okay, been. Okay, right, so I shouldn't quit my day job. Yeah, I mean, right. for all ten listeners. Uh... <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. You'll love 10, it. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might be exaggerating a little bit. Okay. You, you just pump this out in the office, don't you? Yeah. Is that what it is? We count yeah. that. Yep. He listens. Yeah. He listens. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's really yeah. the idea. Is like this gives us a, an opportunity to sit down and like get to know. Because sure. you don't really like. I don't know. I've learned a lot about you. Sure. Yeah. I wouldn't know otherwise. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you know, even though I've worked with you for a long time, sure. you know, and I, I remember thinking first time I met Cal, I was probably like 15 years old. I remember, right, right. No, I was in middle school, maybe even. He asked yeah. me, "You go to Pearson Middle School?" Maybe by that time I was actually in college, and I just looked like I was in. Middle school. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just kind of cool. It's like if, if you know, even if no one listens to it, Jordan and I have talked about this. We sure. It's fun yeah. for us. Yeah. And yeah. You don't yeah. get an opportunity yeah. to like learn about your past sure, and like sure. that you wanted to be an astronaut. I never would have yeah. known that, you know? Yeah. So, and maybe that's still in the cards for you in the next 10 years. Oh you know? uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. That's it. Maybe we'll, <laughs> we'll keep our fingers crossed there. Yeah. Well, at least we can now say, Hey, I'm friends with an almost astronaut. There, there, you, go. Go. there you go. There you go. Yeah. 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 But, uh, Which is probably better than almost friends with a real astronaut. Yeah, that's oh, true. I don't know. Yeah. yeah there you go. Uh, the last question. This is probably the most important one. Okay. Is, um, okay. Unless you had more questions. That your what is your question? favorite dessert? Ooh, favorite dessert. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I like, my favorite dessert would be cherry cobbler. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And cool. really, I guess, I guess anything with cherry, cherries, that's kind of, yeah. So, but cherry cobbler, man, if it's, if it's there, stand back because it ain't going to be there very long. So, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, cherry cobbler, that would be. Be my favorite. I enjoy it. Okay, cool. Does that mean we're getting cherry cobbler or something? Uh, is that what it's that rolls in with that. <laughs> That'd be perfect. That'd be, yeah. That would be cool. That'd be great. Oh, sorry to disappoint. I don't have a cherry cobbler. Sorry, but we thought it was vanilla ice cream. <laughs> yeah. this, this is a podcast that nobody can see, so I could be like, hey, there's the cherry cobbler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, good. Very good. Look at you guys. Uh, I do have several pounds of applesauce if you want to. Oh, that. yeah. That's probably yeah. the best we got. Sorry. Uh, yeah, same thing. All right. yeah. Yeah. Thanks, thanks again thanks, for coming. Hey, no problem. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for, ha thanks for having me. Me. Yeah, and then for anybody that does listen, you know, thanks for listening, and then uh, let us know if you want to be on, because yeah. I mean, that, I guess it's for our drivers, so or yeah. whoever else, you know, or some random person on the internet uh, who really wants to get into RV transport. There you go. Yeah. You go. All right, come on in. Anyway, <laughs> thanks a lot. Yes. Yeah, no yep.